All right, so because there's a lot of moving pieces in part two of the class at the beginning, I've got these different handouts that I'll be giving you that try to consolidate all of these things. So obviously you should take your own notes, but I've also got this uh, sequence of notes. I'm going to pull up again the last handout that I gave you, if you have that one printed out, or um, the PDF, we can look at it. I'll turn the printer on a little bit later because this is noisy. And uh, we'll look at the, the handout from last time, which was numbered uh, number uh, zero, Dev2 How to Zero, Set Up Your Station. I'm going to get a copy of that from the network folder. We'll open it up, and this has, uh, this has these steps about what you need to do every day. So we did, we did a variation of this last time, and we'll do it uh, one time together. And then after this, you'll need to do it on your own every time we get started. So the first thing is from your Start menu, you're going to launch Visual Studio 2017. And when that starts up, if it asks you for signing in to the account, I would. Mine seems to want to jump right away to that, so I will sign in. But it looks like for a lot of you, you might not, it might not ask you for that sign in. That's fine, you can just skip it for the moment. But uh, the first time you launch any of this stuff, it'll take up a little, little time as it prepares itself. So launch Visual Studio, and then eventually sign in. And then on the handout, we're going to create a test project. It doesn't matter. You can call it <coughs> test one, test two, whatever. We're going to create an empty document simply so that we can uh, run it first on the web browser, the, the simulator. Then we'll talk about setting it up on a real device. But that's what you'll need to do when you come in to prepare the, the software. So for me, finally, it got to this point. Sign in. I'm going to sign in. to sign in and they give you they actually give you some free storage if you create an account and therefore you can uh, save your projects in the cloud instead of bringing it back and forth on a flash drive that has a, its pros and cons of course because what if we don't have uh, you know internet access so that's going to prevent our projects from from synchronizing but just like most technology, you know, computers are great when they work. So if we have the internet connection, you might be able to transfer your projects back and forth relatively easy. So we're seeing, for example, for me, it's ta it takes a while just to set it all up, so I'll be setting it up as soon as I come in so that it doesn't waste time during the lecture. That was barely, for me, step one. You might have already gone further than that. That's good. If not, you'll continue. So I started it. I signed in. File new project. So I need a new project. It doesn't matter if you save it on your flash drive, desktop, whatever. I just need to go to File New Project. We're not using the one from last Tuesday. We, that was another sort of like test file. Um, so 
here I'm creating a new project and I'm going with a blank document. I don't even need to rename this. I'll just leave it as is. Blank Cordova app one. I'll click OK. So eventually when that starts up, uh, name it whatever, save it wherever. From the standard toolbar over here, I simply uh, run it, I simply simulate it in uh, whatever simulator it's saying. So I'm going with the LG G5. And this is what it's going to take for me also a little while. Uh, probably on mine it'll be, it'll take a little longer than on yours because uh, I've got uh, Visual Studio running, but I've also got the uh, the the screen recorder and all of that, so that takes up my resources on my system to record the screen and my voice and, and everything. So when that's done, I'll see a result, but all of that that's happening, all of that output there, actually popped up a little bit faster than I thought it would have. Maybe. So that's coming up. All I really need to, needed to do was to run that so that I can see the result in the browser. When that's done, I can go back to Visual Studio and click that Stop button. I've finished running my test. So that's fine there. I can go back to Visual Studio and click Stop. So that was up to step six. Step seven. So this is uh, one we'll, where we'll spend a little time here. So how many of you did uh, bring in a real device, a real Android device to work with? Okay, looks good. Um, I'll, um, I'll check out the, the tablets in just a moment, but notice here number seven, I put it there bold. If you would like to use your own Android device, you must download and install the OEM USB driver for the device every time and use our lab computers. So right now we're going to walk through how do I set up my device to work with Visual Studio? Well, you'll need to set it up every time. And part of the setup is that we need to install the driver, the driver on these computers, not on your phone. Sometimes people ask, well, I already installed it last time. Yes, you installed it last time on our computer, which resets every time you come in. So big and bold number seven, you'll need to do that every time you come in. Let's say we did that, then I would switch the profile over to uh, debug on device instead of debug on the simulator, and then I let it uh, debug on the device, and that's going to take a while too to process. So this is what you need to do on your own every time you come in. Both of these, I would say, even if you've got a real device, because sometimes it's a little faster to debug this stuff in the browser than waiting for it to compile and go onto the device. So if you get both of these out of the way, step four and step uh, eight out of the way, as soon as you have a chance when you come in, then subsequent builds in Visual Studio will be faster. So I got one of them done at least. We'll do the other one in a moment, a real device. Real devices is uh, our items that I have listed in the other handout back on the network folder. <coughs> Number one. So there's a step zero that you need to do every time. And then we'll look at this step one. Uh, this is this all of this is already done. Set up Visual Studio, that's already done. Create your first project, that's already done. Deploy. It should be how to deploy to a real Android device. So there's a few things that we need to do here if you brought your real device. Um, the first item that I have is search online for the driver. Let me come back to that one in a moment. The second item, I should have numbered it, number two. Uh, okay, in your Android device, go to whatever here and return to settings. So what I'm saying here is, if you've got a real device, these are sold in consumer mode. These are sold in the mode that this is a regular person getting this phone to use it as a phone or as an internet device and Snapchat and Facebook and all of that for regular 
consumers. We are developers. We want to put our app onto the device. Normally, a person gets a new app by visiting the App Store. They go over to the official Google Play Store or iTunes Store, whatever, they find the app and they click install. Well, what we need to do is side load. We need to load your app through the side door to the device, not through the App Store yet. We're not ready to publish to the App Store. So we have to activate a couple of options on our Android phone or iPhone to allow that. If you've got your real device, I'm going to unlock it, and I'm also, uh, since it's on my real device and I can't quite show you on my screen here, um, you'll have to look at your device and then do what I'm talking about here. So on your device, you need to uh, go over to the settings of your device, probably on the Android, you need to swipe down from the top, and there's a little icon for, uh, for settings. Mine is a little gear. Uh, probably, yeah, that probably. If it's pretty new off the shelf, it'll probably work pretty well. So, uh, guys in the back, I know you're helping each other out, but could you do a little quieter? So, um, what I'm saying here is, okay, we're trying to go to the settings of your device. Some devices right away let you activate developer mode. I have here listed, if you don't have in your settings an option that says developer mode, you have to activate it. So usually at the very bottom of your settings screen, there'll be an option called developer options. If you don't see it, this is my point right here. You have to go to the About your phone and tap the build number entry seven times. So let's say on, my, on mine I go to About, I find Build number and I tap it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it'll tell me two more taps until you're a developer. One more tap, I tap it again, and then it says something like, Congratulations, you're a developer. So then I can go back one screen and it says, you now have a developer options menu. In here, we have to turn on some options. So looking at your own device, you should activate the developer options. And there's a bunch of options here, a lot of powerful, dangerous options. That's why they've hidden this. Because we're going to activate the ability to install an app not from the App Store. And conceivably, what could happen is uh, you get some virus app, or a hacker could send you a, um, a, a, a something in your email, click here to win $10,000, and you click it, and instead it installs an app that steals all your credit card info, let's say. So that developer option is off until you activate it. We ha I had to tap seven times, and then I get developer option screen. Yes? Is there another uh, something other than build number or something? Possibly. My phone doesn't have that sort of. I went into, mine had a whole into of the software and you have no option and then I found the build number. Okay. It might be a slightly different. It's too much green to find on the build number. Really? Okay. Is there a software, you say? Yeah, for some people it might be a different spot. It's easier to have a build number. I don't see the build number. But I finally got it. Oh, this is not a build. Well, there are some sections that it's not the settings. Thank you. 
So usually when we do this, it does take a moment. I'm happy to help people individually because for some of you, you're going to see it right away and for others not. So if it's not quite what I'm saying, go ahead and call me over. But eventually, uh, you want to get to some screen that says developer options. Um, the at, at the very top, in my case, I have the simply a toggle on and off, developer on and off. If I turn developer on, it might give me a big scary warning that says, allow development settings. These settings are intended for development use only. They can cause your device and applications on it to break or misbehave. So it's just telling you that you're in a special mode here. This is off by default for regular consumers. So from this developer options screen, the important thing to turn on like I have listed here, is there something called USB debugging? So in that developer screen, scroll around and you should see USB debugging. That should pop up with a big scary message, which you should agree to. USB debugging is intended for development purposes only. Use it to copy data between your computer and your device, etc. So there again it's saying, in this mode, if you activate this feature, it could um, cause problems so that um, you know you could install an app that you didn't expect. Um, so do you, do, do you get a new screen when you say that you're a developer? The only thing that really happens is when you tap it and turn it on, you will see the little toggle switch to on. You should see it switch to on. When I went back out, I then saw developer options <coughs> outside of. Yeah, after you've had all the time for seven times. Yeah. All I've said was your developer was a little scroll around and scroll down. It shows up just under settings on my phone. So a couple lines above it out. Then I see developer options inside. Sure. turn this on, it stays on all the time. So that might be a problem, right? So when we leave and we don't want to be in developer mode, we have to remember to turn this on. I'll, I'll try to remind us before we leave. We need to come back to the same screen and turn these off so that we're back in consumer mode. So every time that we come in, we'll need to turn these on. You don't have to do the seven taps anymore, but you have to turn on the USB debugging. Now, I thought I, I, thought I no noted here also, but I also would recommend to use, yeah, I guess I didn't put it in here, but uh, there's another option called stay awake. I would recommend turn on also stay awake inside of this screen, meaning that the screen won't lock anymore. I think that's very convenient while we're debugging because I see people working and then they're trying to compile their app and load it but their screen is locked and then that messes things up. So I would say turn on the 
stay awake button. And anyway, you're, you're going to be plugged in, so it'll be charging. It'll be plugged in, we'll leave it on stay awake, and it, it, it will be charging. That way you can then easily transfer your uh, app from Visual Studio to the device. Now I have listed the order about search online, find your driver, and install it. Then I have activate developer mode. Well, every time you come in, you're going to need to install this driver. So if we find your driver right now, you want to take it with you to install it next time. Or else next time you have to go search for it again online, download it, and install it. So I'll show you how to look for that in a moment. You'll have to install the driver, then you'll have to activate the developer options, like we just did right now, and then we can plug it into Visual Studio. We'll get to that one in a moment. What I'm saying here, OEM USB driver, this is a special driver so that your computer, our computers here, can communicate with your device in developer mode. A lot of times, the device that you get has a consumer driver, a driver so that you can transfer your music onto it, or manage your contacts, or that sort of thing. Well, we need a special version of the driver that will interface to install apps. This is going to vary for everyone, and this is always a little bit of a speed bump the first time we do it, and then it makes sense. You need to go online. You're going to do a search on a search engine, and you're going to search uh, for your driver. You could go directly to the manufacturer's website. Let's say I have a Samsung phone. I can go to samsung.com and look up the exact model number that I have and look for those keywords of OEM USB driver. OEM USB driver. I've got a Motorola Moto E. I think it's the E2. So as, as accurate as you can be, you're going to search for your particular driver. When people uh, do this, they for the first time, they always kind of search around a while to find the right one. Whenever you search here, whatever results you get, I would recommend be careful where you click on because there's so many of these websites like usbdrivers.org and teamandroid.com and droidviews.com. The only website that I would trust is the one related to my phone's company. So anywhere else that you find this driver, I would not trust it. I would not click on it. You've just activated developer mode, and now it's telling you if you're in the wrong website, install this. You don't know what's going to happen. So this is another re reason why Hopefully, you have a dedicated developer's device. You know, $30, $40, $50, $60 $60 unlocked device just for development. Because if I'm doing this on my real phone, you know, and I activate developer mode that opens me up to the world, and all my photos are here, and my family contacts, and all of that, you have to be careful. So, developer's device is what I really recommend. From one of these answers here, I need to click, and then hopefully it takes me to the right place. Obviously, what I clicked here only matters to me because I've got a Motorola Moto E2. If you've got an LG whatever, don't click on this because th this is the driver for my Motorola, not for your LG. So sometimes you need to go to the website, and somewhere here it'll say driver or device manager or something. This is what I'm going to pause for you to try it on your own, and then I'm going to pass out, if you don't have a device, I'm going to pass out a device for the class. So take a moment to try to set up your device. To confirm that it worked, you can follow. You can keep following the handout here where it says, uh, return to Visual Studio, change from simulate to device, click the green run button. You might get other pop-ups that might happen on your phone and might tell you, are you sure you want to allow? Just follow the handout here for a moment and see if you can get that Cordova testing app on your real device. Let me pass out the uh, real device.